hello and welcome to the demo video from team city builders so i'll first of all introduce you to the team uh, so this is our team and we've worked in the spring semester at wave university to build this game so in this presentation i'm going to talk about the basic overview of what our game is what poop techniques we've used the libraries used and some of the technicalities of the game and the graphics so first of all coming at the overview so as you've known from our previous videos our game is mainly about creating awareness on climate change and it's sort of a turn-based strategy game where the player makes decision based on things which cater to climate change and uh, production of green energy so this is our game and I'll show you the basic structure of our game the basic gameplay so this is the basic structure of the game we have four maps I've opened one of them and th here is the shop which you can open up and these are the objects which you can place on the screen so for example if I place a farm uh, some sort of noise plays and the, uh, there's these bars which indicate the player level the green energy the XP level of the player and the cash he has in his bank so these are the parameters on which the game run so for example if I place an industry the green energy should increase so as you can see I've placed an industry and the green energy has increased so apart from that the player level the XP level also increases on placing any object so as you can see the XP level is increasing and the ca cash is reducing as I place any object on the screen and apart from that we've made a grid which uh, allows only certain places to have an object placed at them so you can't just randomly place any object to any part of the screen this has been done to make the game sort of symmetric so yeah that's that and so coming back to the presentation so the OOP techniques we've used I'll briefly go over the techniques we've used we've used inheritance so basically every object that you can see on the screen is being inherited by some sort of a class uh, which we we are calling unit so more information is on that is available on the UML abstraction we've used abstraction throughout the code so we're not doing anything explicitly uh, we're we've created functions that do the task for us and we've just defined them there and we're calling them so the the code is easier to understand so yeah and encapsulation so we've uh, encapsulated the data types so for example every object has some sort of a sound as well as a text associated with it so we don't need to uh, call the text object on its own because the text object is uh, made inside the object class so it's in, in, encapsulated inside it so yeah now moving on to the techniques we've used polymorphism because as you can see when we select any object on the screen so we do we have no idea we have no information on uh, which object it's gonna be and which object object the user is going to select so we have to implement a polymorphic container so it's done in that and we're also drawing the objects using the polymorphic container overloading so yeah the objects are colliding and the collision is detected so that no two objects are drawn to the same patch on the screen so this is done uh, with operator overloading okay so since we have different so, uh, types of objects on the screen so the problem arises that we uh, we have to write some redundant code which does uh, a single task with all of the objects so what we've done is that we've used templates for generic types 
and we've implemented that to reduce the volume and redundancy in our code okay so moving forward to the libraries uh, for images we've used SVG as well as PNG images uh, as you can see for our menu as well as the gameplay so we have SDL image which handles SVG which are vector graphics as well as uh, PNGs we have, S we have SDL mixer which handles the sound in the game apart from that we have the text library SDL TTF which handles text rendering and creating textures from text and another feature in our game is uh, loading the game and saving the game so for that we've used the boost library boost archive to load as well as save the game so yeah some other technique technicalities so as I've told you before that we've used grids to specify s specific locations to uh, create patches on the screen because our game is isometric so we have to display 3d in uh, on a 2d screen so we've made a, uh, an isometric grid so that we can place object respectively to their uh, respective screens save and load we've used serialization uh, implemented on boost archive to save the game as well as load the game yeah so sound is uh, controlled by a single object object class which we've made which is created into the which is created into the uh, main loop of the game so it's it handles all the sound and stuff of the game so for the text we have used the SDL TTF to display every text and implemented that in a class and that class object is created inside each and every object so we don't have to cater or uh, draw the specific text box which displays the description of any object uh, by on our own the, the library is uh, the class handles that on its own so it's sort of an encapsulation so yeah scrolling this is the main feature of our game because our game is isometric and we have to view objects closely so uh, sc for scrolling we have achieved that using the SDL rectangle and we are basically rendering a 5000 by 4000 uh, pixel wide image and our screen is uh, 1020 by 768 pixels so we are rendering a part of the camera uh, we are rendering a part of the map so it and moving the rectangle over the entire map by the arrow keys so it feels like the camera is moving uh, so uh, some problems are arose with this one of which was that objects that we placed on the screen were not moving with the ca with the map so we had to refresh it, its coordinates with respect to the map as the map moved the uh, objects should also move so we've done that okay so coming to the graphics graphics are an integral part of any game so we've put in the most effort in graphics so each and every sprite that you can see on the screen is uh, custom built it's it's not uh, directly taken from the internet apart from some uh, small objects which we've used in building our sprites everything we built are built on either illustrator or photoshop so coming back to the game i'll show you a demo of the menu So this is our menu, as you can hear the background noises, uh, music is playing. So I'll probably turn it down so that you can hear me better. Okay. So we are detecting uh, hovering. So if you hover over any of the uh, box, it detects that and if you click on it, it detects the click. We've also implemented a back button on every single sprite and every single uh, screen. So you could go back to the state you were and we have an exit button so you can exit 
the game directly from here without loading the game so the loop works uh, like th uh, right now the game is not loaded only the menu is loaded so we don't have the entire game uh, uh, in the game uh, in the memory so if you want to exit then you can exit and the game won't load so this is saving a lot of memory and apart from that we've implemented settings so settings contain music settings immediately so music second, uh, settings can control the background music so this would turn off the background music and this would turn off the special effects as you can see now the hover music is not playing so we'll turn this on and go back and here you can see the load game feature the load game is currently in beta mode and we've not been able to completely integrate it to the game i'll show you a test run of the load save feature so let's play the game here we have four maps i'll show you each map one by one we have four maps so the first map is of uh, Korangis uh, because of the local context so let's open up this map so each map has some basic common layouts and then the side graphics and the theme of the map is different so this map portrays a cool environment as you can see and mountainous areas having trees and stuff so this is that and let me show you the other map the other map is of Kulshan so this map is more like uh, a sort of uh, let's say ancient area so this has some pyramids installed into it so it would look like some uh, historical site so yeah this is that and these all maps are custom designed by our graphics designer Hamza who've designed all these things who've collect who he's collected all these small objects from the internet and basically combined them into a single map so this is the second map and we have the third map of Sadar so this map is more greener which Sadar uh, we want Sadar to be greener so this map implements a greener environment and we have the shadowy and air giving trees in this map again these these maps are custom designed and each and every object that you can see on the screen is designed on illustrator so yeah now coming back to our fourth and final map which is Habib University so this is the fanciest map we've made because it's of Habib and it has that purple theme to it and let me show you around this map so this is the map as you can see I'm scrolling through it so yeah so these are the maps okay so that was all from my side and thank you so much for watching Allah Hafiz